I was talking to one of my friends who has a 2013 Cummins and he's kind of concerned about this recall. He's thinking that his truck is not going to perform as it has done in the past. And so I did a little bit of research for him and I went to a Chrysler store here. They gave me some information. I talked to one of the techs. So at the time when I was there, you guys saw a thumbnail. He was actually working on a truck. He was getting the recall done for that and he was actually getting the CP3 added to that pickup truck as well. That was a 2019. And so I wanted to show you guys something that I got from the store and we'll kind of jump into the video because I want to answer some questions that people have been having about this update. All right, so here it is. This is a vehicle safety recall. I got this from one of the stores out here in Utah. So I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but uh, vehicle subject to this recall must be updated with the upgraded calibration. Okay, so unfortunately, this is a big deal. Unfortunate. I mean, it sucks because if you bought a Ram truck and you potentially don't want this thing added, there's nothing you can do about it because nine times out of ten, they're gonna probably hit you on not being able to upgrade your registration, which really does suck. And if you have a deleted truck this could be a problem or is it now I am online and I've been kind of going through some of the forums just laughing at some of these guys some of these guys are ticked off and I kind of understand why so here's a question I'm gonna ask you guys do you think that Ram should allow for people to do a buyback on some of these Ram HDs probably anyone that bought one from maybe 2019 and newer because that was something that Volkswagen had to do. I remember I had just left the Volkswagen store that I worked at and this had just came out when it was the diesel gate back in 20, uh, was it 2015? And yeah, so people had the option to either keep the car or Volkswagen would have to buy it back. And so with that being said, I almost wonder if Ram should do that, which I don't think it's really necessary because they're just recalibrating the emissions systems on the truck. So basically keeping them from being able to be tampered with, I guess. Now, I wanna read one comment to you guys. I had wondered why nobody had posted this on this Airstream forum. So he says, so the fix will likely be removing the unauthorized emissions control defeat devices and likely a software change, possibly less power and higher fuel consumption to meet the emission standards that they didn't actually meet then they are going to have to charge enough for future product to cover the cost of the fines and recalls. People are posting that they aren't going to go in for the recall, preferring their existing engine and software. And some places that can mean not being able to relicense the vehicle based on Volkswagen's experience. The penalty is reported to be the largest, which you guys pretty much know at this point, $1.7 billion rounded off. So yeah, this is a big deal. And I think that there probably should maybe be a possibility for if someone doesn't like the way the truck performs that they could have potentially a buyback. Um, I don't think that this is a big deal, personally. I don't think that a lot of people are gonna see a lot of issues with their trucks. And I'm only basing that off of what the tech told me because I thought, and this is just something that I was thinking in my head when I first saw this was, I thought they were gonna be locking the ECM. So I was gonna, tell my friends, hey, nothing wrong with maybe going to find an ECM for your truck. That way you have one just in case you know you're gonna keep it and you just wanna have an open ECM just in case this reprogramming makes your truck either have higher fuel consumption or the power is not as good as it was when you are towing your trailer. But again, I'm just talking out loud because I have to be careful what I say. I don't want this to come back and bite me because again, I'm not telling anyone to do anything wrong. Just saying, if your truck has issues in the future, it may not be a bad idea to just have an ECM on deck just in case. And you can have the Ram dealer recalibrate that one to see if there's a difference, right? Now, someone had a good point here on the HD Rams forum. They said, I still believe they are looking for defeat devices. What better way for the EPA to illegally search private vehicles that have been deleted under the guise of a recall? You're dealing with the most popular engine class for modification. And that's very true. I mean, most guys who get 
coming, especially diesel engines. They're still wanting to delete EGR. They're still wanting to get the best performance because if you don't know this, trucks that have DEF and all the emissions on the exhaust, like the SCR, DPF, those things really do choke the diesels. So when someone does do a turbo back exhaust, delete EGR, the trucks do run a lot better and they could potentially get anywhere between three to five MPG improvement. That's probably unloaded. Now towing, it could get up to like two to three from what I've been told from guys who actually have experience in this. But um, when you hear guys getting 30 miles a gallon, I, I've never met a guy who got that kind of fuel economy, just being honest here. So, you know, when you think about the EV push, that kind of ticks me off because I feel as though they're really trying to push people to be prepared to buy an EV because this is going to make a lot of people upset. But I will tell you right now, when I spoke with the tech back in the shop, he told me that they're not locking the ECMs. So I don't know what that means. I, I think that we're going to have to wait and see what happens. But if your truck's already deleted, um, I would definitely consider getting an ECM. I'm just telling you right now, I would just have a separate one just in case. Um, he also said that if a truck is deleted, the truck will just have a check engine light. So, you know, if it's an older pickup truck, you don't have anything to worry about, but he said if it's a newer one, that might be an issue. Yeah, you're gonna have to find a good dealership. If you have a good relationship with someone or if you know someone that works at a dealership, the dealer does not have to open the hood of your truck, right? So if you do take it in for service, all they have to do is just plug into the OBD, you know? So that's something that you have to understand is there is no reason for them to go lurking. And I don't think that a dealership will refuse to work on your truck if it is deleted. So just keep that in mind. And if your truck is a little bit louder, obviously you can just say, oh, I just have aftermarket exhaust on it, but yeah. I know some people to keep their truck to look like it's still factory, they will kind of gut the DPF and all the other emission stuff out of the existing exhaust system there. That way it all looks stock. But for the most part, um, this is a big deal for some people. And like I said, I would be a little nervous if my truck was deleted because some dealerships, you know, go by the book and they probably will refuse to do the emissions update if you don't have specific components on the truck. Now the last comment I want to read to you guys is on the HD Rams forum. So a guy said, I'll be ordering my new electric vehicle as soon as Air Force One is battery powered. I thought that was classic. I love those kind of comments and it's true. And he's taking a shot at the government because again, the government doesn't do these things. Like they're not um, running emissions control systems in their military vehicles. Do you know why? It's because it makes them less reliable. So when they're out fighting wars, they want the vehicles to be more reliable. But for you and I, who spend 80 to $90,000 for these pickup trucks, they don't care if they're unreliable. And the thing that really ticks me off is these emission control systems have been out for a long time, probably about over a decade now at this point. So why haven't they been doing updates to make them better for the consumer? That's what makes me so angry about these things is you want to force people to do these updates to their trucks, but yet you're not doing any updates to make them better for our trucks and make them more fully efficient for our trucks. So I feel as though the manufacturers and us as a consumer should start pushing back a little bit because at some point, something has to get and we'll have to wait and see how reliable the truck become because who knows I mean is this gonna affect the Ford and GM pickups at some point someone was snooping around Cummins right and at what point would they do the same thing for the other two I mean or any manufacturer that still has a diesel engine but obviously this is a big push for EVs and even though they don't have any HD EVs I'm pretty sure at some point in the near future, we're gonna start seeing that. We'll just have to wait and see how reliable it is. I personally think it's not gonna be reliable, personally. I just think that the biggest issue you're gonna run into with an EV, and it's been talked about so many times, I even talked about it on my channel, I actually showed you guys, is the mileage. And it takes way too long 
to charge a Ford Lightning. It takes two hours to get 100% charge on the battery. And so you're gonna need that if you're gonna be towing because obviously if you're going at a long distance, you need as much juice as you can possibly get. And even though Ram has had the best iteration for an all electric vehicle by using a gas engine as a generator, I think that's probably the only alternative. But again, at what cost is it to continue to do this? Because in order to make EVs efficient to tow, they need a combustion engine. Isn't that funny? That to me is a classic, you should just stay out of the automotive world government and just do what you're best at, spending money, peace.